Dr. Jordan Peterson went to war with Pope Francis on Twitter and created a Twitter spat over the topic of social justice. Apparently, Dr. Peterson believed he needed to correct Pope Francis on his theology. And I was able to get some exclusive video footage of a Zoom call that Dr. Jordan Peterson and Pope Francis had in order to iron out their differences and to come to agreement. Here it is. Because in order to be able to think, you have to risk being offensive. I mean, look at the conversation we're having right now. So what the tendency, huh? You know, like you're certainly willing to risk offending me in the pursuit of truth. Why should you have the right to do that? It's been rather uncomfortable. We are all the children of God. Now, that conversation you just watched never happened. We created that montage, right? It's not real. Maybe it could have happened. But here's what really happened on Twitter. So the initial tweet came out from Pope Francis, and it reads like this in English. Hashtag social justice demands that we fight against the causes of poverty, inequality, and the lack of labor, land, and lodging, against those who deny social and labor rights, and against the culture that leads to taking away the dignity of others, end quote, 1.9 million views. And then Jordan Peterson clapped back with a retweet, and he says this, quote, there is nothing Christian about hashtag social justice. Redemptive salvation is a matter of the individual soul, end quote. And then people on Twitter started to pile on because they love seeing Jordan Peterson going after Pope Francis. And here's some of the memes and tweets that came afterwards. Check this one out. It's the classic meme with the two buttons. Lecture the Pope on what Christianity is. Loudly proclaim that acting like Jesus is wrong. David Dark's advisory board said Christianity, when it isn't fascism, is a peasant prophet philosopher movement that stakes everything on justice, which is always social. Jordan Peterson, repent and be made whole. Zach Hunt says, individualism is antithetical to Christianity, which you would know if you didn't get your theological education from Fox News University. And then Father Casey says, when you get your advice about Christianity from someone who is more interested in culture wars than Christianity, this is what you get. Theology at odds with the prophets, the law, and Jesus. Social sin is real. God abhors injustice. Father Casey, end quote. So what the heck is social justice? It's kind of confusing because if we go back to Aristotle and St. Thomas Aquinas, there's not discussions of social justice, those two words together. Instead, we're simply talking about justice. Justice is one of the four cardinal virtues. You got prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance. And justice, according to St. Thomas Aquinas in the Summa Theologiae, Secunda Secunde, reads as follows. And if anyone would reduce it to the proper form of a definition, he might say, quote, justice is a habit whereby a man renders to each one his due by a constant and perpetual will. And this is about the same definition that is given by the philosopher Aristotle, end quote. So justice is the habit of giving another person his due. That is justice. And so the term social justice in a way is redundant because all justice is social. It always involves two parties or two persons giving to one another that which is due. It could be honor. It could be money. It could be rights. All of these fall under justice. So why even talk about social justice? Well, in the 1800s, and then especially the 1900s, the term social justice became very popular. And oftentimes it was used by non-Christians, but sometimes even by Christians to, in a way, cloak the ideas of socialism and Marxism into a Christian package. But its actual origin comes from a Jesuit priest by the name of Aloysius Taparelli, a.k.a. Luigi Taparelli. Now, he was a philosophy professor in Rome, and he was a huge advocate 
and teacher of St. Thomas Aquinas, who I just mentioned before. Taparelli talked about the ideas of social justice and subsidiarity. Now, he's in the time of the Industrial Revolution, and he's trying to provide a theology that can be used to take the ideas of justice, as found in St. Thomas Aquinas, and apply it to what's going on in Europe, America, and other parts of the world. Now, he viewed society not as a monolithic group of individuals, Jordan Peterson, but as various levels, stratas of sub-societies. This is very similar to the Catholic principle of subsidiarity. That is, those in local neighborhoods or in regions should be governing themselves on things that apply to them, like education, agriculture, industry, and not by faraway superpowers, aka London or Washington, D.C. Each level of society has its own rights and duties, which should be recognized and supported. So for Monsignor Luigi Taparelli, for him, this is social justice. So that's our first point. Our second point is, okay, so does our Lord Jesus Christ, does Christianity teach that what we've just identified as social justice is what Christianity is all about? And does it have anything to do with salvation? Because Jordan Peterson says Christianity is about this saving of your soul, which is true, Jordan Peterson, but is it antithetical to justice, to what we've just identified as social justice? Well, to answer that question, we have to turn to the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 25. And for me, this is one of the most terrifying sections in all of sacred scripture, because when I read it, I realize what a bad Christian I am. So Matthew 25, beginning in verse 37, then the just shall answer him saying, Lord, when did we see thee hungry and feed thee thirsty and gave thee drink? And when did we see thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and covered thee? Or when did we see thee sick or in prison and came to thee? And the king answering, now here in the story, the king is Jesus. And the king answering shall say to them, Amen, I say to you, as long as you did it to one of these of the least of my brethren, you did it to me. Then he shall say to them that shall be on his left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, which was prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me not to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me not to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you covered me not. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they shall answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see thee hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to thee? Then he, Jesus, shall answer them, saying, Amen, I say to you, as long as you did it not to one of these least, neither did you do it to me. And these shall go into everlasting punishment, but the just into life everlasting. Wow. That's Matthew 25. And he's saying the way that you save your soul, the way that you experience, to use the language of Jordan Peterson, individual salvation is not simply believing in Jesus. That is necessary because we're talking about Jesus Christ here. He's teaching it. He's talking about what's going to happen between people like you and me, and Jesus on the last day. And he says, to the extent that you fed the least of these, gave drink, let me break them all down here, the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the sick, and those in prison, to the extent that you minister to them, those in society, the lowest people in society, you minister and love Jesus. And to the extent that you ignore those people in society, you ignore and cast derision on Jesus Christ. And what does Jesus say? Don't worry about it. Everybody goes to heaven. Dare we hope that all men be saved. God is a loving, friendly, rich uncle, and he's going to give all of us candy. No. He says that those that did not minister to the so-called outcasts of society, they will be cast into everlasting punishment. And those who did practice kindness and charity and justice to the poor, the hungry, the naked, they will go into 
life everlasting. That is straight up gospel teaching out of the gospel of St. Matthew. And so I think what's going on here with Jordan Peterson is he's not a Catholic. He's not Eastern Orthodox. He is influenced greatly by those traditions. But I think just being, you know, a Canadian, American, North American type person, we have this Protestant ethos that Christianity is just me and Jesus. I got my Bible here. This is sort of the Protestant idea. I got my Bible and I got me and I got Jesus and that's everything and I'm good to go. And that's not really what we read in the gospel. Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You'll love one another. Part of this relates to the understanding of Martin Luther, who said that we are justified. We are made just. We receive the justice of God by faith alone, by imputation. That is, that God goes into the cloud on a Microsoft Excel sheet and writes down your name, writes down my name, Taylor Marshall, and then in the column next to it, justified. He has justice. He is saved. Enter, save the document. That's it. That's called imputation of justice or imputation of righteousness. Whereas the more traditional, biblical, I would argue even Catholic understanding is that we are justified, we are made righteous by God infusing, pouring righteousness in us, and then we must cooperate with the grace, a synergy between me, a sinner, and Jesus Christ inside of me, working with me, and that is being made just, justice. And that's what we see in Matthew 25. And that's also the third thing I want to do today is go to James chapter 2. We see the same principle at work in James 2. I'm going to pause right here. We are halfway through this video. And if you're enjoying it and learning things, please hit the like button, the thumbs up. Share it on Facebook and Twitter. And if you want to get more great content like this, join the million subscribers on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, and where else? Facebook, who are watching the Dr. Taylor Marshall podcast. I appreciate all of you, and I invite more of you to subscribe and enjoy this content. All right, let's get back into it and look at James chapter two. He raises a social justice question here, a matter of justice, a matter of charity. And he asked an important question, beginning at verse 14. What shall it profit, my brethren, if a man say he hath faith, but hath not works? Shall faith be able to save him? And if a brother or sister be naked and want daily food, and one of you say to them, Go in peace, be ye warmed and filled, yet give them not these things that are necessary for the body, what shall it profit? All right, so St. James is saying, okay, you say you have faith, that you believe in God, you believe in Jesus, but what about your daily life in society? You see people that are naked, that are hungry, and you say, hey, be clothed, Here, be full, but you don't lift a finger to help them. Can that kind of faith lead to attain individual salvation? And the answer is going to be no. This, again, is the friction between Martin Luther in the 1500s and the Catholic Church at the Council of Trent. This is the debate, and it's interesting to see Jordan Peterson weighing in 500 years later into this debate. All right, let's keep going. Verse 17, so faith also, if it hath not works, is dead in itself. Verse 18, but some man will say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without works, and I will show thee by works my faith. Thou believest that there is one God? Thou dost well, the devils also believe and tremble. Pause. So you see, faith alone is not enough. The devil, Satan believes in Jesus and knows he's the Messiah and knows he rose again on the third day. Satan knows the Trinity is real. He believes in the Trinity, but he's not saved. He's damned. And the same thing is true of humans. You can know these things. You can believe these things. But if you don't put it into actions, or as James says, into works, your faith is in vain. It does nothing. There is no individual salvation without works. Verse 21, was not Abraham our father justified by works, offering up Isaac his son upon the altar? 
seest thou that faith did cooperate with his works, and by works faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, saying, Abraham believed God, and it was reputed to him to justice, and he was called the friend of God. Do you see that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only? And skipping to verse 26, For even as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. Our individual salvation, if you want to use that term, which is the term Jordan Peterson brought into this discussion, salvation is dependent on the cooperation. Verse 22, faith did cooperate with his works. It's the handshake. It's the synergy of faith and works. And the works have to do with how you treat other people love other people, serve and minister to other people in this life as you maintain a lively faith in Jesus Christ. I think one of the problems here is that Pope Francis is generally seen by Catholics and non-Catholics as promoting social justice to such an extent that it's politicized and even looks like socialism or Marxism. And Pope Francis has said things like that. You've probably heard me on the podcast report on that. And so I can see Jordan Peterson pushing on that, trying to raise the teeter-totter from one side to the other and say, hey, what about salvation? What about heaven and hell and redemption and atonement? And all of those things are true and important. But we have to stress redemption, atonement, regeneration, justification. We have to stress all of that in the context of faith and works. Otherwise, we're just going to spin off into heresy like Martin Luther or John Calvin. We must be founded in the words of sacred scripture, in the words of Matthew 25, and in the words of James chapter 2. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've got two videos on the screen right now. One is Joe Rogan's five objections to Jesus Christ, and I answer those and handle those for you. And the other video are the 10 differences between Catholicism and Protestantism. You'll like them both. Pick one and start watching now. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.